I was born and raised in New York City. And although I always understood the 24 by 7 by 365 live wire vibrance that an urban environment could offer, I was always amazed from a young age how any of it actually ever worked, especially riding the subway and seeing how this ancient layers of infrastructure, so brittle that could break at any moment and be bad for so many people up above. And perhaps it was a premonition because after Hurricane Sandy, with the storm surges and the high tides and the wind, a portion of lower Manhattan was literally underwater. So in the early 1990s, after my undergrad degree from New York University, I decided to start a software company with a group of friends in Northern California, just north of the Golden Gate Bridge. We were designing video games and working with George Lucas and Industrial Light and Magic of Star Wars fame. And I like to say back then that we were imagining worlds that made sense. I relocated to a small town called Fairfax, which was about 25 minutes north of San Francisco. And my first experience was seeing someone ride a horse into town for their morning latte. I knew in that moment I was no longer in New York. But I was surrounded by these really beautiful, lush, organic, biodynamic family farms. And I started to learn about the work of Rudolf Steiner, especially this idea of celestial planning for cultivation and harvesting of really beautiful, lush, life-affirming ingredients. And then also about the work of Bill Mollison and this topic of permaculture and food forests and this idea of high density food production in small plots, but that was low maintenance. And really, I think it was the farm to table meals in the, set in the rows of cultivars with friends and family after harvesting fresh ingredients and cooking together and sharing these beautiful moments. And I was just feeling something so powerful. It was, it was happiness. I was happy. And I was trying to understand, is it the food? Is it the conversation? Uh, is it the wine? And I realized in that moment that it was the first time I had ever really been so close to where my sustenance was coming from. And that started a lifelong journey for me on doing case study research of organic and biodynamic family farms and intentional communities and eco villages, especially all around the world. And the one thing I remember vividly, my first visits to these eco villages was that I could literally hear the pollinators. I could see and hear the bees buzzing, the hummingbirds flapping their wings, the butterflies visiting flower to flower, and this restorative ecosystem in balance with the people living in these communities. Fast forward in 2012, I came to Stanford University and armed with this idea of a master's thesis in regenerative infrastructure, I became a lecturer and coach as part of what's called the Solar Decathlon Competition. It's an annual competition where universities get together to design the most energy positive home. I think I was about five minutes into my lecturing and research when I went to the lead professors and I said, you know, it occurs to me that a smart house inside of a dumb neighborhood doesn't make a whole lot of sense. And I was really blessed in that moment because Professor Larry Leifer, who's the head of the Center for Design Research at Stanford University, he stopped and he looked at me and he said, wow, that's a really big idea. Let's do it. And in that moment, the research initiative at Stanford was born for Regen Villages, as well as my off-campus self-funded research on this topic of self-reliant neighborhoods. But I wanted to go deeper. I wanted to find a software connection to the natural world. And that's when I started to learn about the work of Dr. Suzanne Simard, who had lovingly coined the term the Wood Wide Web versus the World Wide Web, when she had discovered this fibrous inoculation of fungal threads under the forest floor that were literally conveying nutrients, minerals, sugar, carbon across vast distances. It was this have-need ledger between different species under the forest floor. And I was just so impressed and amazed because then I started to realize in my further research that from an evolutionary perspective that, that a percentage of our DNA is actually mycorrhizal at the micro level. And most recently, they discovered 
at a cosmological scale that galaxies are actually interconnected through these thin fibers of dark matter. And when simulated, it looks exactly like a mycelial bundle. Now, what's amazing about these bundles is they don't have a central brain, but they are intelligent at the point of sensing. And that network connectivity of intelligence is what really drove me to this idea of a village OS, a village operating system to design and then operate these beautiful neighborhoods. To start with, of course, is this idea of non-till soil, organic, biodynamic, patchwork quilt of farming. That's a full menu at the doorstep. And what's incredible about this is that it's also a different economic model. It's not about mass production of monoculture for retail and wholesale and, and sending at far distances. No, it's about local homeowners association fees and community supported subscriptions that allow the local farmers to make a living wage while also being able to live in these beautiful communities. We marry the soil-based farming with the controlled environment farming. These amazing systems of aquaponic and aeroponics, which is actually an Asian technique for, for farming, where you use fish ponds where the fish waste is actually ammonia and that, that gets converted to nitrates. And then with a low energy water pump is brought to the top of these lattices. And then after it feeds the plants with all the nutrients, the water through gravity comes back to the fish tanks completely purified. And through this method, we've been able to save almost 80% water in our farming and almost one third increase yield year round. There's a metabolic integration underneath. And that's really this whole idea that the output of one system literally becomes the input of another. And that is the basis of the kernel of our Village OS software, that we can use machine learning to both design and then operate these really beautiful, self-reliant, flourishing communities. Moreover, that we can use this technology to replace current subdivisions and suburban sprawl with a new kind of development that is marrying to open space with new build energy positive homes where two thirds or more of the open space is conserved and preserved for productivity. Imagine if you will, in this scenario, 25 hectare, 60 acre open piece of farmland where we can use our Village OS software to overlay a design for 400 homes, 400 families, and apartments, condominiums, townhomes, tiny homes, even villas for co-housing and co-living. But also that you can see here two thirds of the open space for water capture, high yield organic food production, controlled environment farming, waste to resource management, energy generation. That all of those pieces come together in benefit for the neighborhood and for the adjoining communities. Then if you can take a zoom out with me to low earth orbit satellite like Starlink, where you can imagine these neighborhoods being able to communicate with each other, learn from each other and improve based on where they are in climate zones. It's an amazing idea and use for data and technology and machine learning for the benefit of human and planetary well-being. I like to say often, it's not Star Trek, it's not a holodeck, right? These are beautiful neighborhoods that are just based on logical infrastructure, where the key is community and connectivity across socioeconomic levels, across ethnic, racial, religious barriers, right? Where the food is the most disarming kind of thing. People come together, they break bread. Those recipes are stories of families and of ancestry. You don't even need to speak the same language. It can bring tears of joy and laughter, but also that we can age in place. So my current affiliation at Stanford is in the School of Medicine in what's called the Stanford Flourishing Project, all about happy longevity, right? And even in Greece, of course, we understand that the Blue Zone research is very strong there in how we can live long, healthy, happy lives. And it's about open space in relationship to new build. It's about animal husbandry and symbiosis that these animals are roaming freely and aerating the soil and fertilizing the soil and becoming part of the same ecosystem that we all live in together. But that also that the village square is this year round farmer's market bursting with flavors, 
this idea of piazza kitchens and long farm to table sharing, but also shared commercial spaces where you have light clinical health, dental, DIY maker movement, shared workspaces, events, all of these things create vibrance so that people don't necessarily have to commute someplace. They can actually live and work and live in these beautiful communities. Where the village square pours out into the nature and the nature pours back in. The walkable, bikeable, edible neighborhood really at your disposal and your families uh, being able to get up early in the morning and smell the, the freshly baked bread and the coffee and whether you ride your bike into the village square or you bring your dog, you meet friends, you watch the sunrise or the sunset, there's togetherness in the real world. But also that you can participate in the communities at your own leisure, at your own speed, right? If you do so, you can reduce your monthly association fee, your rent, or even your mortgage. But not only that, by participating in the communities, you improve your health, you improve your well-being, and also your community standing. It takes a village, literally, to raise a child, but also that generations to come and our progeny can learn to live within nature and not separate from it. This is a really powerful and important point. Creating these animal pathways and transit points, right? Because animals bring pioneer and heirloom growth. But in order to do that, we need autonomous vehicles. We need no cars. We need to be able to have no driveways, and no car traffic, have it separate from the neighborhood itself by using these shared mobility hubs that are electric and autonomous. And that era is coming to us right now. And also, we can look at this idea of uh, new supply chains. Supply chains right now are brittle. They're breaking all around the world. So what can we do except to create hyper-local, regional, and then national resiliency? by having these beautiful neighborhoods that are overproducing and that can they share with each other through these kinds of drone deliveries and taxis. These are communities of vibrance, communities that come together around self-reliance and strength. But also when you create abundant surplus, you create compassion and peacefulness and generosity. These are all the most com important components for living a long, healthy, happy life. Now on the topic of the built, right? Using earthen built materials like uh, cross laminated timber or mass timber, being able to create these new kinds of modular homes that are volumetric or component. And you can really understand that this is the way forward because the construction itself is in controlled environments where one third less construction waste, one fifth less construction cost on site. It literally comes together like Lego. There's a renaissance happening right now in 3D extrusion and 3D printing. We're seeing now this unbelievable new trend for being able to create buildings um, through printing. And imagine using hemp or bamboo, other kinds of earthen building materials that are all carbon sinks, that are fire retardant, that are pest resistant, that are mold resistant, that are even compostable later in life but that also make these very beautiful, dignified homes that are very low cost. This is game changing for the global south. Region Villages is absolutely on a mission. And that mission is to integrate all of the 17 sustainable development goals under one umbrella. We're an active member of the EU Commission for Smart Rural Villages. We're part of the EU Network for Rural Development. We are part of the UN Climate Secretariat Resilience Lab presenting recently at COP26 in Glasgow, because Regen Villages is the future of living in self-reliant, flourishing neighborhoods. I thank you for this time together. I'm grateful, and I ask that you join us in our journey.